You can't sit here and be like, the police are rubbish. They're not helping black people. Okay, cool. What are you helping do to help black people? Please tell me before you say that. And most people go, ah. what, you go protest? You go stand outside for a little bit so you can put it on Instagram. So I just dropped my app, www.chisellift.com. Online personal training. You've got custom meal plans, custom training plans. With the training plans, you've got a video showing you how to do all your exercises. Uh, you could log in your sets, your reps, the weights you use, and literally every month I chained up your plan. In the description, you got a code BESTU20 at the moment. You can use that to get a 20% discount for life. New episode out, got Gabriel, got Dom. We're talking about the police and how they treat black people. Also this week, I've got an event on Saturday, Afro London at Mintleaf Lounge in central London. It's gonna be a good one. The last one was great. You can get your tickets in my bio, Lock Sundays end of the month and the first Sundays of the month and some of our love the big ones come in the warm up party and the festival so I just thought to myself I'm just trying to make sure that I don't get robbed you get me so when I've literally broken it down it's it's like she she saw sense in what I, I mean mm. like, I'm like oh, I'm a young black guy driving through Bromley in the middle of the night there's no one and a car is speeding right behind me they, they could think the person behind me could be someone who's had beef with a similar car to mine Ooh, and yeah, that's always mistaken a identity and you know that happens yeah. you get what I'm saying so instantly I'm just like yeah you can't do that to people because you don't know what if I took a, a slight wrong turn and crashed my car now mm. well yeah that's that's called a poco so it's a collision with the like in the police so if the police um so if we're driving yeah. and if anything happens like around if we're involved in one so if i'm yeah. behind you and i put yeah. my blue lights on and you crash your car yeah. essentially that's kind of my fault yeah because i've done something to make you do that so, regardless yeah. of whether i've hit your car yeah but like even if i've done nothing wrong if i'm doing 20 miles by if i put my blue lights on yeah then and you just crash your car yeah. that's my fault okay police officers get in trouble for that and that's what a lot of um people don't understand yeah. so like this is like the wide like the public will say police can do what they want yeah. they don't they get away with everything yeah the reality is a, l a lot of the time you get disciplined for absolutely i don't want to say absolutely nothing but for things that the like the public will be like right well, you actually yeah you get in trouble for that yeah do you know what i'm saying it's yeah. it's 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 something that i wish the um, society could see yeah because i hear what people say and then stuff like that your your example if when i tell people that yeah you they, like people get suspended people get their driving ticket taken away you can't drive no more yeah and everyone's like, oh, is it? It's like, yeah. yeah, you really get disciplined in the police. Okay. What, what would you say, uh, example, would you say, like, especially, like, with the lockdowns and that, would you say a lot of police use that as an excuse to increase on stop and search? Like, remember I said to you, like, right before we started recording, I said, before 2006, I hadn't been stopped since mm. then. Then all of a sudden, first lockdown comes, and I've been stopped, like, four times. So like even now when I'm driving, I'm a bit more just wary just because of, you know what I mean? The way mm -hmm. that they just roll up on me like randomly. Like, Was it all in the same area? It's been between Bromley and around here. I don't want to say where we are now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, because w what some people won't know, where I live now, or up where I live, um, you know where I live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they do a lot. They do a lot of stop sites and stuff yeah. like that. Those are all like, a lot of the time it's initiatives. So something's happened in the area. So say if there's like county lines, like you were saying, yeah. someone gets paid in a unit to do something about it and they have to show some sort of results. And I don't necessarily like the way they do their results, which is yeah. it's based off of how many people you necessarily stopped. Yeah. Do I think that works or not? I can't tell you because I don't see the, the, the figures. If county lines or drugs go down because of what they do, they yeah. see it as it's worthwhile. Like as a progress. Yeah, the yeah. byproduct of that is you stopped you six times or four times, yeah. or you stopped me five times, or Gabriel six times. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like even the, the the time that where I got stopped, like around that Causeland area, I was in a hurry to get back to train someone. Mm. So it was like in my head, I'm thinking, right, oh, you're cutting into my time, like you're cutting into my money, and yeah. you just literally like imagine there was like loads of cars traffic, but you just decided because he's in a nice white car. And she basically said it. She goes, yeah, yeah, nice car, county line. So we just, I'm like, right, oh, you want me to downgrade and drive like a punto just to look like... You still get pulled in the punto there. Yeah? You still get pulled you in the punto You get what I'm saying? Like, for, you, for you to mention a nice car as an excuse, like, like I said to you, I said, I bet I'm way older than you. 
so when she's checked, she's seen that I'm at least over 10 years old. And I yeah, was we, like, yeah, you just assumed because you look I'm casually in my car, I look younger than I am. I'm mm. in a tracksuit. You've just taken assumption that he must be a do you, adult boy. Do you understand why that happens though? Huh? If do you ever flip, just flip it around and say, all right, cool. If I was a fed, how would I, I know people don't, they, they're like, oh yeah, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't like. What if I was a football player? You shouldn't what profile? Yeah, yeah. you shouldn't profile people. No, but what if I was but a the football reality, player from training? A football player come from, yeah, you could be. But the reality, yeah. you're gonna, so if, as a police officer, yeah. if I'm in my area, I've got like a certain amount of information, intelligence. Yeah. It's say there's county lines, for your example. Yeah. There's county lines and, it, and it's gonna happen at a time to which most likely there's not a lot of people on the road. So you can effectively get across London as quickly as possible. No, but at the time I got stopped, remember mm-hmm. I, I said to you, there was loads of traffic and I said, a couple of people I know drove past at, around that mm-hmm. time and messaged me saying, you all right after? And I was like, what do you mean? They were like, oh, we saw you get stopped. Mm. I was like, oh yeah, 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 I'm cool, man. Like, you know what I mean? I was on my way back home and blah, blah, blah. Like uh, the two officers pulled me randomly when they've driven past me and looked in my car and mm. you know what I mean? So it's a thing where what Due was their reason for stopping you? They said county lines and you're in a nice car, so... And there was no other conversation? There was no other conversation, I would always but I was just like... I, I just literally just gave them my licenses. I was like, I'm in a hurry, so... You did the right thing. Yeah, you know but I, mean? I would always ask people, um, what drew you to my attention? That's always a good question to ask. Yeah. Not why are you stopping me as such, not under the Road Traffic Act or because they said, they said the misuse of drugs. I said, okay, what drew you to my one? Yeah. Because I, I bet you if you stop, and then you look around, you will see other of versions of your car. And then I'll say, you will say, why not that one? Why not that one? Why this one? Yeah. Because it happens a lot and it, it happens to me. Yeah. You, you see my car, yeah. I, get, I get stopped. Yeah. And that's the question I ask. I say, what drew, you to my, what drew your attention to me? Yeah. I know you're allowed to stop me under the road traffic tech to, to ask for my driving license and my insurance. I know you're allowed to do that if I'm yeah. on the road. Cool. But at the same time, you need to give me a reason to why you saw fit my car. Yeah. Do you get me? Yeah. Was it because you put my registration through the computer and it said, oh, that person hasn't got insurance? Yeah. That's fine. But the, thing is, I don't, but, but the thing is, I don't even think he had enough time and she had enough time to do that because there was two of them. No, but you have to. No, 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 you know, no, but what I'm, I'm saying to you, so what I'm saying, what I'm saying to you, to that is, they, they, they have to have a reason to. Yeah. So, in, in this, like, the reason I cut you off is because you're defending them right now. No, I'm not and defending them. No, saying, no, but what you're saying, saying is no, coming across saying, that way. I'm saying they didn't have enough time to pick up my plates to be able to. So, I'm saying they just literally just took it as a. Yeah, you. you on, on oh, a so, okay, what role do you play in the police force? As in, what I'm is your gang actual. Unit. Gang unit. Yeah. Okay, so technically you're sort of. So, explain what that means. So, you're probably rolling in a. I do a lot of county lines. I, okay. I don't wear uniform, so I don't. Okay, so a you're lot technically like well. undercover, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and what? I'm playing clothes. Plain Undercover's yeah, got undercover, a different term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Clothes, but yeah, so go what, on. What was your main? What was your main reason for joining the police force? As in, what was the? Yeah, what, was what the prompted initial? you to actually say, do you know what? I actually want to be a police officer over maybe every other job that was out there for you. And also, I'd like to ask a question: being what is, what age did you actually join the cadets? I'm assuming you had to go through the cadets first. No, no. You don't do that anymore? No, 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 there was no cadets. So is cadets is something that I think is more to get towards the youth, to give okay. them an insight into being police and allow them to, you know, get involved, which okay. is So what age would you say you actually decided that you want to be a policeman? Not when you was maybe nine or 10, because sometimes oh, no, no, you no. want to be footballers and then we realize no, we're no. not going to be one. No, no, no. So for me, my story was that of, I finished university, I went to Coventry, studied multimedia computing. Okay. I came out and I realized I don't actually like computers anymore because I've spent all, all my life up until that point behind mm-hmm. a computer. And I was like, this is actually, I don't like this anymore. Mm-hmm. I, I'm actually quite active. I like playing basketball. I like doing playing mm-hmm. football. I like doing martial arts. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember it was, it's crazy. I had this job interview and I went and they gave me work to do for the interview. Okay. So they gave me a test and I was like, yeah. that's fair. And they're like, oh, take this away. Mm-hmm. Show me what you'll do with it. And then come back. And I was like, bro, like, you should pay me for that. Mm-hmm. First of all, why am I doing your job? I don't even know if this is a project that you're actually mm-hmm. running now. So I didn't even reply back to them. And then I was, I was thinking about it deep and I was like, I want to do something active. Mm-hmm. So I, I applied to the Marines yeah. and, the, and the girl that I was with at the time was like, oh, you'd make a really good police officer. At the time, I was like, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. I was like, being a police officer, it's not for me. It's, why do you say it's not for you? Sorry. Because at that time in my life, it was, it wasn't socially acceptable to be a police officer. Okay. Do you get me? It's not that my, my family actually really. Socially really accepted good. In, in 
in general or in the community? Within the black community. Okay. Within the black community, it's not so. It's just like no, I didn't. I didn't have terrible experiences with the police. But I didn't have great ones. So I've spoken to them. I didn't like the way they spoke to me, but I wasn't really in trouble. So I was quite lucky. I was. Uh, I stayed away from it. Playing football and playing basketball just kept me away from any trouble. Also, oh, because you couldn't play basketball, well, you, you went to be a police. <laughs> I was. I was. I was. No, I'm sorry. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. I'm, no, I'm no, a fan no, footballer as well. No, no. I was. I was about. I was. I was a better happened, footballer. You know? Yeah, I was a better footballer than I was a basketball player. But I stopped playing football to play basketball. Were you like six three? Yeah, six three. But yeah, I stopped playing football to play. It was just dumb. I don't know why I did that. But um, I, you know what it was? Because of my upbringing, playing sport, and I don't want to insult anyone, but mm-hmm. playing sport was something that people that weren't intelligent did. Yeah. So I had never had an interest in that. Because like my dad, was, it was never a push to me, like, yeah. do sport. Mm-hmm. It was, I'm going to sound like, condescending but it no, was just beneath yeah, yeah, yeah it was just not something truth. that it's like being a plumber or electrician like, uh, you want you, to fix drain pipe exactly yeah. when you see my family my family mm. don't do it like even what i do now in comparison to the other uh, people in my family it's still like mm. you're like at the bottom of the social mm. economic <laughs> ladder yeah. so it's yeah. like it's funny but um yeah so she the, the girl i was with was like you'll be a good police officer so i applied for both mm. i said i'm gonna do the marines or i'm gonna do that because the marines will let me see the rest of the world and mm. prove to myself, because I like to do the most difficult thing. So I'm like, okay. what's the hardest thing? Let me try and do it. How good am I? No, you don't want to be in a black police officer. You definitely picked one of the hardest roles. Hey, you know what's jokes? You tell them hey, that one there, buddy. Jokes, yeah. I, never, I, I never knew he was a police officer. Then I think I was in carnival. Yeah, it was carnival. I was in carnival yeah, walking. Yeah. Then I was like, hey, buddy. I said, rah. I didn't even say anything to him. I said to him, I said, I was like, look, I was like, rah, dumb, in a uniform. I was like, what's going on? You thought, was, what, thought it was that fancy dress for <laughs> yeah, yeah, You know what I mean? Like, cost, costume party. <laughs> well, it's funny because I remember saying to you after, I didn't yeah. want to go up to him because I didn't want, because I know there's a stereotype behind the police. So I was like, I don't know who you're with and yeah. I don't want them to think anything yeah. about you. So I was yeah. like, let me not say nothing to you, but you came up to me yeah. and I was like, oh snap, yeah, yeah. safe. And you know what? I actually appreciate that. It made yeah. me feel really like, no, no one can like, say nothing to me. Yeah, <laughs> but I know that, but yeah. it doesn't mean you still have to embrace no, someone. But you know what it is, because we've known each other, like, it, it's not like, you're just a random. I've known you since kids. Mm. So from mm. basketball days. Yeah. That's a very long time. That, yeah. That's a very, very long so time. Now, Probably like your, 20 years. With your, with your step now from becoming a police from, officer. Yeah, I've Now, applied. you applied, obviously, then you obviously- I got you, both. Okay. So they wanted to be, be to be an officer mm. in, as a, in the Marine or whatever. They were like, yeah, yeah, you're like, the kind of person that we want as an officer mm-hmm. come, come down. My mum obviously was the defining factor. Mm-hmm. She was like, You're, I'm not letting you die. You're not going out there to die, no war. And I was just like- So that kind of put the Marines to, to bed then. So it was <laughs> now, I was like, I'm gonna die anyway, mum. Like regardless, I'm gonna die. You, you but didn't want I to said, young Afghanistan. Yeah, well, I would have been there. It would have been crazy, I would have been there. And so I just said, all right, cool. We'll see which comes back first. The Marines came back like a day before mm-hmm. and then the police came. Cause I didn't think I was getting the police. I was like, they don't want black guys in the police. Mm-hmm. They, as soon as you tick that box saying black, that's mm-hmm. it, it's a wrap. Mm-hmm. I remember my sister helped me with the application. Mm-hmm. And then they came back and they were like, yeah, come down, do the test. Did all the tests. They were really, they weren't difficult. I'm not going to say easy. They weren't difficult. I scored in like the top 1%. Are these mental tests or physical tests? So in all of the tests, so you have physical tests, but they don't really judge them. They don't score you on that, but they, they just score Did you, you on all the... A young bench press. Yeah. No, they did. A when I started, run. When I, they when do. I, when I started, no, they what, it's what, called a push-pull machine. So, you know, it's a machine that you push and it judges how much energy, you, how okay. much power you're pushing well, against of, it. A lot of officers I see, like... They stopped you, it. Who walk about okay. like they need they cardio. They must have stopped it clearly. Yeah, yeah clearly. They, they stopped it because well, actually, the you had to bench. I think it was like thirty kilograms, which is ridiculous. I know, I know. It's not kg even. Thirty kg. Yeah. And some couldn't bench thirty. Um, because well, <laughs> they want to say that it was unfair towards certain people because um, for certain people because it wasn't fair in terms of muscle mass and your genetics and, and that. Uh, Oh, genetics, that sounds very interesting. <laughs> sounds like you're alluding to something here that some, some have, people have a better predisposition to, um, <laughs> to lift more heavy weight. well, heavy weights than others. Well, science would say that some people do have that. Okay, what people would this be, sorry, sir? 80 so kilos. Between, so I, I lifted that, yeah, eight. Well, which people would tend to have the... <laughs> well, science will clearly state that males and females, males are stronger genetically than okay. females. So but to do the test based, has to be fair. Not to do a race base. Well, you're going to have to ask the Met Police on that one. I okay, can't tell okay, you, so okay, I have okay, to do okay, research. Okay. But... It, it, could, it, couldn't, it couldn't be race based because there's definitely no racism in the police force. Hundred percent. There's hundred percent racism. Oh, there isn't. No, no, no. Of course there is. You wouldn't be there if there was. You wouldn't. You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that to yourself. You wouldn't join the police force unless. Oh, that's it. Because you joined because you wanted to be the change. 
That's what it is. You wanted right, to be the change. I'll tell you why you have to join and why it's still to everyone to join. No. It's because that's you, what we like you got two options. You went to change the police force. You, got you two, was the martyr. You got two options, yeah? I'm not a martyr. I'm still alive. No, no, I'm still alive, I hate you. Hey, when he crossed it, when he left, you know, you know, serious time, you know? Nah, to me, my life, like, my motto is if you're going to complain about something cool but you have to do something about it at the same time yeah. you can't sit here and be like the police are rubbish they're not helping black people okay cool what are you helping do to help black people please tell me before you say that and most people go ah. well you go protest you go stand outside for a little bit so you can put it on instagram cool okay i, I agree with that I agree so with that. all right I cool but I, I i you'll never hear me complain about something that i'm not actively trying to change and would you say that was part of your motivation in joining the force, honestly? No, 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 that wasn't the motivation to start with because at that time I was a younger person. This is why I am now. At that time it was do something physical, do something that you enjoy, do, do something, do you know what I'm saying? I wasn't trying to change the police when I was going there. I wasn't going there saying, I'm going to make a difference. Yeah, yeah. I need to show representation. I was doing it because I was like, okay, this seems interesting. What I find interesting though is that I'm going to assume that your relationship with the police before you became a police officer is probably different to others and one thing I don't like is when we behave like all our behaviours are homogenous meaning that what you've gone through is the same that I've gone through mm-hmm. so for yeah. instance my experience with police up until up until now is probably pretty bad mm. okay but that's my own anecdotal experience which means I can't push that on you because sometimes someone will look at you and be an officer, an officer and be like oh you're a black guy why have you joined the police force yeah. you might say that my experiences with the police have not been bad mm, yeah. so I, I don't understand what you're talking about but I guess you don't need to have had bad experience with the police force to, to not be able to understand why there is a stigma between certain demographics joining of course. The, the police force. Yeah. So uh, there's racism everywhere. Of course. Whether you're working in the corporate field, whether you're working as a PT, whether I've got a restaurant where, you know, I own a bit of land opposite the restaurant and mm. I've rented it to a white lady. All the white customers go there. They don't come into my restaurant. Mm. Now, they haven't, they haven't called me the N-word in front of me. They haven't said anything to me, but my restaurant's here and the land I own is literally t- 20 feet opposite and <laughs> not, it's, full of, it's full of white people that. it's not even it's literally yeah. it's opposite my restaurant's full of people like myself mm. and the land that i rented to a white lady is full of white people now these are the same white people that have walked past my restaurant day in day out who haven't come into here and the go over there so there's racism everywhere but my thing to you now is that i'm going to make a wild assumption to say that you've seen racism whilst you've worked there in yeah, the past yeah, no six seven years um, mm. i pulled up some stats and figures mm. and um some of these things that i've pulled up is um when you're talking about stop and search According to the gov.uk in 2019, they said that um, when it comes to stop and search, it was something like, let me just get my numbers, Four right? Times? It was, it was something times. like that. When you compare something like six times mm-hmm. black people are more likely to be stopped than their counterparts. When you look at the prison system, we make up 3% of the population of the UK, roughly as black people. Mm-hmm. And then the prison system, we're up to 13, 40% of the prison population. Mm-hmm. And people will say that, oh, those numbers are almost four, five times more than usual when you look at the other counterparts inside the it prison is. system. And I always say that, you know, it's a numbers game. In my opinion, and, I, and this is where your field is probably better than mine, because you asked Chizo earlier, um, there's always a reason why you're being stopped, which there's is obviously common sense. There's got yeah. to be a reason why you're being stopped. Whether that reason matches up to why they've stopped you it is a different, it's it's a different, different story. Yeah. So for instance, yeah. there might be, the initiative might be county lines. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then the dumb thing, like when I used to get stopped regularly when I was younger, first thing they'll stop and say, oh, there's, there's been a lot of drug dealing in the area. Yeah. And they'll stop me and they'll be like, but um, do I look like a drug dealer? And they'll say, what does a drug dealer look like? Mm. Yeah. You're now going, you're doing circular reason, you're now going, like you see like even going back to what you were saying about uh if there's a, that there's a reason that they probably stop you what if let's say in this area they're running county lines and and they were saying ah oh, there's a look where for the all the real county line runners all were suited and booted yeah i've i've arrested people in suits that have been doing you more. get what i'm saying yeah what well, if they were proper suited and booted like looking like they were just doing office jobs Do how would what? they be able to able to separate what is what you make a good point it's true yeah it's, it's, so, so when, you're, when you when you mentioned earlier trying to change things mm-hmm. okay obviously when you first joined that wasn't your intention i'm assuming oh, I'm, no, as, no, I'm no. assuming your intention to join the police was you wanted a job primarily yeah, you was yeah, active i need a job hence the uh, marines and police because yeah. you, you weren't even thinking of being a policeman at first was no. you? it was more than marine something physical yeah then the police op- 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 presented itself mm-hmm. and you got the job and you're like you know what let me go ahead probably one or two of your parents or your family was like boy dom don't know about that one. No, so. my mum. My mum was like, um, she always says, "Be careful," and that's reg- that's across the board. She always mm. says, "Be careful." You need to understand this is how the work environment is because my mum's done a lot of stuff. And um, do you get what I'm saying? So she 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 always looks. She's my mum. So she's gonna look after you. She's gonna be like, "Look, the world's mm. tough. This is how it is in England. Regardless of what anyone tells you, 
there are gonna be people that don't like you because of the color of your skin. And the metropolitan police is built up by some something silly like eighty percent of them are white mm -hmm. or eighty six percent are white. Eighty four percent on that. So yeah, yeah. So not all of them are gonna necessarily like you. Mm -hmm. Some will like you. Some may dislike you solely based on the color of your skin. Mm -hmm. Some. Mm -hmm. But you need to understand that and you need to be able to navigate that. Do you know what I'm saying? She's always told me that growing up. Whereas, but what's unique about my family is solicitors, police officers. I've got police officers in the States. Mm -hmm. that my cousins are police officers. Do you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So, and they're, they're lawyers as well, solicitors. So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a weird family dynamic where we are all involved in the, mm -hmm. the, that, that system in one way or another. But um, there wasn't, like my cousins who are like, I wouldn't say they're mad. Or no, I'm, I wouldn't, I ain't gonna bait up stuff, but they were just like, all right, cool. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? And they wouldn't necessarily be pro Metropolitan Police, mm -hmm. but they're pro me. Do you feel me? Okay, let's say, let's say, reiterate that again. They're not necessarily pro Metropolitan They're not pro police, Metropolitan Police pro by me. any shape or form, but they're pro me. They know who I am mm -hmm. and they understand me as a person. Mm -hmm. So they understand, well, he's not gonna be going out doing all this madness. To mm -hmm. So they're like, I'll support you. I ain't supporting that organization. Do you feel me? But well, technically, if, if you if you know this is going on, mm -hmm. and the things you talking about uh, racism, right? Because what is I, I I don't like using the race card because not everyone in the police is racist. Why you, not? I tell you what, okay, well yeah, we know yeah, that. Yeah, but because because often people will say, oh, the police, you know, I don't like the police because they're racist. And I say, as an institution, okay, maybe the things that go on back end with the profiling, mm. I can only use I can, I don't talk for everyone. I can use only, only use my experience, mm -hmm. and I can say as an experience as a young black man growing up in South London. Um, having a license, having insurance, because what often I say, if you get stopped for not having insurance, don't call racism. Even if they pulled you because, because you was black, it, you've got no insurance, bro. Mm. Like, mm -hmm. let's just take that and say, that's it. Hold it But if you've, if you've pulled it, if you've come behind me, you see I've got insurance and everything else matches, okay? Mm. There's times when I've been driving and like say, I'm on this side of the road and the police on this side of the road. And um, obviously, They've got NPR cameras, there's cameras, there's different sort of cameras that yeah. people can use to, to do things. But let's just say I'm stationed here, you're stationed beside me, and let's say they've looked over. And obviously I've been told that I look suspicious when they looked at me. Now, suspicion is very ambiguous. Subjective. Whatever, it's subjective. So I've been pulled over probably about, in my lifetime, I'd say about, i say close to 30, 40 times. I've, I've lost count. I'll I'll say about, and, I, and I'm not joking. I've lost count. And I, 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 I believe you. Even to the point now, as an as a, as a old black man now, mm. I still, sometimes I'd be driving, I have a baseball cap on. Yeah. I, I almost find myself taking take my off. cap off. I'm like, what the f are you doing? Put your cap back on. Yeah, you know what? Even you know if what's I'm driving hood. I don't drive with my hood on. Don't sometimes yeah, yeah. I, the feds will be, I'll see yeah, yeah. police cars coming. I, I don't do that at all. And I'm not lying. Just of that. Sometimes I take my hood huh? off. As a yeah. big old late 30 year old brother who's fully legit, I almost find myself taking my hood off. To one time, I remember my mama said to me, Gebre, Gebre, Gebre. It's because sometimes you're walking on the road, you wear your hood. Take off the uniform that the thugs are wearing. I said, I said, Mom, what you're doing right, Mom, is victim blaming. You're because you're saying, you're profiling me saying that yeah. because I'm wearing a certain attire, it allows this to happen to me. Because when we look at on the flip side, when we talk about a certain sex who wear a certain uniform and say something happened to them, we'd call that victim blaming. But why can't I be afforded the luxury what, of wearing anything I want to wear without getting without stopped? And I'm going to ask you because I'm going to assume that you've probably been in a police car before and maybe you've seen something happened where your unit or the car you're in has decided to maybe pull somebody, mm -hmm. okay? Now, obviously, there's always an initiative. So I guess there was always a ground generally to it. And I think the biggest problem amongst us, we don't know our rights. Mm, I think the biggest yeah. problem a lot of us don't know is the things that we're being told to do, especially like I've been pulled before, what, not really realizing that I don't actually have to get out of the car. What, what, what's, the, what's, the, what's the name of the gun unit? Is it CL19 or Trojan? It was Trojan at one point. Because I got Trojan pulled by Trojan twice, 19, one time. Yeah. Huh? I'm not, I'm not, if I tell you my story, no, so my story is a different I'll, to I'll, other I'll, people. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, you about this. Did they take you out of the car with the guns? I'll, tell you, I'll, I'll tell you about this. <laughs> so uh, one time, me and my cousin, we come out of the gym, and before we used to go, like literally after we go to the gym, we used to jog from Brixton. That's when I used to live in Brixton. We jog from Brixton all the way around Clapham and back. Mm. So this one night, I've literally got outside my house. There's a pub across my my road. Car's gone, <laughs> pulled out. They've jumped out, guns, everything pointing at us. And me and my cousin just baffled because we just come from jogging. Then the description was one black guy wearing all black had robbed a corner shop around the corner. We know this guy. This guy's known us all our life, the guy who owned the shop. So as he pulled us, no, they were saying description is wearing all black. I was wearing a rugby jumper from a charity called Wooden Spoons. So 
the jumper was green, red, mm. <laughs> yellow. It was multiple, multiple colours. Coloured, yeah. And you could see, like, I'm dripping. Like, you could tell. So the robbery's probably just happened, like, literally just then. Mm. And you could see I'm dripping. And my cousin's wearing, like, a, a light green or something jumper. Like, we was wearing light colours because we know that in the night we're jogging. We need to be visible seen, in yeah, it so yeah, we can't yeah. get hit if we're, you know what I mean, running across the road and a car's coming. So they already pulled us and pointed at us. All the neighbours are looking at and you know, like, it's proper embarrassing because yeah. your neighbours, yeah. they know you're a certain way in it. So, like, you've got all these old Irish and Scottish guys coming around. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're all right. Da, da, da. And uh, yeah, we're cool then. But ask them, what's the description of the person? Wearing all black. I said, look, the jumper's wet. You can see that. It doesn't even look like I've just... It wasn't raining. So, I'm like, it, it's wet. Yeah, For me yeah. to run from there to here, it's like running from the top of the road to here. I'm not going to be soaking in that distance. Oh, you, so you get what I'm saying? Mm. So you've just assumed that just because a black guy's been mentioned and I'm within 100 metres of the area, that <coughs> I fit the description. Then when the guys are pulled up, and funny enough, he used to play basketball. Mm. And I was like, no, 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 it's not them. <laughs> they said, like, oh, yeah, you're right, Chiz. And I was just like, oh, you look, look how your unit is just... So if I didn't know you... It would have probably got more disrespectful. Maybe, yeah. You get what I'm saying? Mm. And so you see what he's just, mentioned and yeah. what I've mentioned. Mm. And you said that a lot of people who talk in the community about the police and how bad it is, they mention all these things. Now, I'm, I'm going to answer my question with what I'm, ask, I'm going to ask you in a second. But what are you doing now whilst you're a police officer to try and... Not, and obviously, it's not your job to do that because your job is to just be a policeman. Because sometimes people say, oh, no. you know, what are you doing to change things? It might just be a pay packet for you. But... Yeah. Look at the experience that we have in with the police, mm. which I think you've probably seen once or twice, where you've probably seen things which you might deem unfair. Yeah. Once or twice, I'm gonna say once or twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because they're not gonna do these things when you're around. Mm. They wouldn't do that, big black guy. They're, they're not gonna want to sort of <laughs> crucify themselves because all the stuff that we've been talking about, it's not real. So now that you're there, they've got to make sure that these myths don't occur. So what are you doing now that you're a police officer in this field? You've been there seven, eight years, as you said, mm. close to that. What are the initiatives or the things that you've put in place, the things that you've done to sort of try and repair the relationship between... And once again, it's not your job to do this. I'm just saying that, just in case you maybe have. It, yeah, no. It it's, very, like, it's, not, it's not really, because sometimes people put so much on people in fields like it's your job or your role to be the Luther King of, shall of tell you what it's called. It's called taking accountability. Okay. I'm in a position of power to an extent, so okay. I have to take some accountability for... I, I, th I take it for my actions. Yeah. And I know my boys that... I've got a lot of black friends that are in the police as well, and they all do the same, one way or another. But what I... The main thing I do, which my units allowed me to do, is engage with the younger community, because those are the ones that are dying. Those are the ones I care about the most, to be honest with you. I care about young black kids, because they're our future. So because of my job, I engage with loads of them because unfortunately they drug deal they do county lines unfortunately that predominantly especially in south london yeah okay let me say something if you're in lambeth and they, you get sent to westminster and they want you to sell drugs or carry drugs or carry packages or do anything don't do it because my team are really 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 good and if you know anyone that's been arrested in westminster they'll know me because i probably caught them or one of my boys did and they'll tell you so ask them but anyway so for me, it's I, arresting someone, a lot of people see it as a really bad thing. But when my team arrests you, and I'm not saying promoting get arrested by my team, but when we do... We, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want them to shift me. Yeah, yeah. Come on, get me, man. But what happens, me, man. What happens it has to be is... Dumb, man. No, no one done to me. Our job is actually to help. Do you know what I'm saying? Not just to send you off to court. To help who? To help people that we've arrested. So if I can give you help, Whoa, 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 Let me land, let me land. So you know the young kids, these are predominantly the ones that I, I encounter, mm -hmm. they may be living in poverty to an extent, because you know that a lot of the kids that are doing this are living in a form of poverty, so whether that's they don't have a lot of food, whether their parents aren't looking, to, looking after them properly, whether they don't have a lot of clothes, that's still poverty mm -hmm. in this country. So I get to go, go into that household, speak to your mum if your mum is actually there. If your mum's there, then I can build up a rapport with your mum. I can be like, look, this is his first offence. He's got to go to court. But I can put stuff in place to help him once he comes out. Because he may not go down. A lot of the time people get caught with drugs, they don't go down. Do you know what I'm saying? Is that a good or a bad thing? It depends what they make of it. It's a good thing if they listen to me and then they go, like, I've put kids on, get a new job. Like, the kids that go on, like, there's schemes Westminster have, and Lambeth have it now as well that allow kids that have been in trouble to go do jobs that they want to do. Like literally any job. So I say to you, like you say you're 18, 16, whatever, 
and I say, Gabriel, what do you want to do? If you could do anything in the world outside of being a musician, because I don't, and that's because me personally, I'm not letting you be no musician. That's, that's long. Um, being a sports person. We'll tackle that later. Yeah, yeah, that's long. You're not going to be a sports person. I said, outside of those two roles, being sports and music, what would you do? And some, certain man would be like, I want to be an architect, you know, like building shit. That's calm. I'm like, all right, cool, bet. I'm going to put you in touch with this person and he's going to facilitate that. And when that guy that comes back to me from the council, he said, you know what? The best workers we have are the kids that you lot send to us. Not just my unit, yeah, the yeah, kids yeah. that are sent from the police, they're always on time. Do you know what I'm saying? They listen. Mm-hmm. They know how to time, they, like their time management is on mm-hmm. point. And what, I'm tra- what I explain to them is all the stuff you do on the road when you're selling drugs, those are transferable skills. Mm-hmm. So once they listen, this is why going down isn't always good or bad. If they go inside, they do come out sometimes and engage with us and I can help them. Sometimes it's a little bit more difficult because once you come out, getting a job is not like you've been, you could be in there for three to four years Mm -hmm. and you've made new friends. You've been indoctrinated. Do you know what I'm saying? It's a struggle and I understand it's harder when they come out. That's why the reoffending rate is so high. Yeah, because basically what happens is they come out, I go, yo, I'll, I'll go into prison before they come out. So I know when you're coming out. Mm-hmm. I know because you can get let out for good behaviour. You know, you know, like if yeah. you're good, yeah. you're going to get let out early. Mm-hmm. I'll be there and I'll be like, yo, come talk to me before you come out. And I'll say, this is what I'm going to do. This is I'm going to help you. I've spoken to your mum. I've spoken to your dad. Your dad, your, your mum's great. Da, 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 da. We're trying to facilitate this. Do you know what I'm saying? But unfortunately, sometimes they come out and they're just like, I need money now, isn't it? You're a police officer. Mm-hmm. Okay, you work primarily with um, in the Westminster Borough. Yeah. Okay, dealing with those who do with county lines, gang, drugs, or whatever. But then what you're saying is that the bit that you do for the community is that when you arrest these guys, it's not a case of where you just arrest them, that's it. You do the aftercare, which is basically try to get them into some form of jobs. Yeah. We have things which are called NEETs, who are not in ed- education, employment, or training. So you try to put them in some form of education, training, or employment. Mm. So you say that that primarily is what you say that you kind of do, that you're helping, where it's not just I'm arresting these kids, put them in prison. I'm actually trying to find out what the root problem is, meet their families. You know what's really bad? What's really bad with, I can only help you if I arrest you. And I'm not saying I arrest you so I can help you, but sometimes that is the only way you're gonna get help from me. The only way I can physically help you, I can't put you in touch with that guy unless you've been arrested or offended. Is that actually your role? Is that actually your role though? Well, within my team, that's the role I've taken upon myself. So that's basically your role in the team, In, in the police force? In my team, I still I deal with all gang stuff, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah. But when kids come along, between me and my boy, yeah. we juggle it between us okay. and we facilitate it. Because we're like, we'll sit down and we'll make no BS decision. We're like, is this guy going to listen to us? Okay. Do you get me? So in essence, and what you're saying in essence then is that you've now carved a role in the police force where you can actually help the community. Yeah, but that's already there. But mm-hmm. because I engage with them so much through the mm-hmm. role that I do for the gangs unit, yeah. mm-hmm. I'm so much closer to them. Mm-hmm. These conversations are actually like helping the community as well. But mm-hmm. as I said, um, there's like youth offending teams mm-hmm. that deal with you know kids they've offended and they go in and they help, blah, blah, blah. But because I've built up such a rapport, you, if I arrest you, Gabriel, I'm going to your house tonight. Mm-hmm. It's not I'm going to your house next week. Mm-hmm. I'm going to your house first, I've got to search you anyway. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to sit down with your mum. I'm gonna be, your mum sees me. She's like, right, okay, cool. She may say, where are you from? I'm from Nigeria. My dad's Nigerian. She's like, oh. Immediately, you've got something you can talk to me about. 